Dungeons and Coffee presents Aha Tips. Good morning. Thanks for watching Dungeons and Coffee. In this episode, I'm going to talk about mushrooms after I get wired up here. Top of the morning to ya, bedhead and all. Mushrooms come in pretty handy for uh, all sorts of different types of terrain. You can do underground, uh, you can have them out in the forest. There's a lot of things you can do with mushrooms. And they're cute, they're easy, they give a lot of flair and variety to your terrain. So I'm going to show you some of the uh, different mushroom varieties that I have made over a per period of time. Starting with the earliest, and I'm going to graduate all the way up to the more recent. All right, this is one of my earlier mushroom pieces. And as you can see here, what I had available, some flocking, some of the cheap packing styrofoam. And uh, as you can see, I'm just kind of experimenting here, playing around. And um, the mushroom caps, if you will, these were just made out of sticks outside of the apartment I lived in at the time. This was a long time ago, too. And the mushroom caps themselves are made with clay. I was kayaking down the uh, little side of the river uh, one time. Oh, no, actually it was Brush Creek. It was Brush Creek in Ohio. I was kayaking down Brush Creek and saw this bank um, by the river that had uh, some really beautiful deposits of clay. So I grabbed a glob of that clay and I had that with me for some time. And uh, I used that clay to make uh, different different types of terrain and little sculptures. But um, that, that clay is what I use to make these mushroom caps. So um, that's, that's an idea. Um, of course, this isn't the, my best work, but this is, this is a long time ago. But the material remains, uh, remains strong, so something that you could, uh, you could use and that's readily available. Again, we have the old foam, uh, clay, and sticks. That's pretty much it, uh, and the flocking. And of course, you can just use paint also. You wouldn't have to use flocking. <gasps> you wouldn't have to do that. So there's one. And then once I did that, I wanted to make some larger pieces and go along with that concept. But I wanted it to be more individualized, something more, more modular that I can move around uh, and arrange however I wanted. So again, this is done with sticks clay and uh, this is an old what is that an old insurance card or something <laughs> as you can see I didn't have uh, I just used what I had at the time and uh, this is when I started getting into glow-in-the-dark paint uh, for under dark I thought that would be kind of neat so that's when I started getting into that and I'm uh, beginning to add Mod Podge or glue to give it a shiny effect to make it glisten with dampness if you will so uh, here's another one with the same techniques, same techniques there. The, uh, the sticks combined with the clay, I really like that. I think it makes it look very, uh, very natural. It's from an old board game there. But again, there's a, this is two pieces, by the way. The mushrooms are two pieces. Uh, with this one, I didn't go with the stick. I went with clay on both. So, you just sculpt this piece, sculpt this piece, slap them together. The same technique I just used. Let's see, I used uh, some hot glue to help these pieces stay together. Because I made them separately. Those toy machines you see in um, various stores. And you get these little bouncy balls for like a quarter or 50 cents, whatever the heck they cost. But, um... Now that's what I did here. I got a few of these, and you just cut them in half, and they make really convenient uh, mushroom caps, and that's the style I used here with this little grouping of mushrooms. And as you can see there, I just cut the coot in half, used a natural stick, a real stick, and uh, did a little little base here. Uh, but that was very easy. These rocks are foam. You could use real rocks, too. Um, and that's just a little piece of wood that I sawed on my coping saw. And uh, that's what I had at that time. With that in mind, 
I just went a little more advanced and made this piece here. And again, I put a grouping, uh, this time around a stalactite there, and uh, tried to get a little more detailed on the paint job there. Uh, and again, I like a lot of variety. I don't like too many of my pieces to look the same. So um, that's just the style I used here for these mushrooms. Again, I'm using a glow-in-the-dark paint because I was going for the underdark under dark thing there. Okay, okay. And then more recently, in one of my previous videos, I went out in the woods and used some uh, natural resources uh, to make a variety of different pieces of modular terrain. And uh, these are acorn caps that I used here. And with these acorn caps, as you can see, I just used a stick acorn caps. And these are just the uh, ground itself or the cave floor is um, just cardboard, layered cardboard. And uh, just layered that, used super glue, or not super glue, but uh, hot glue. And I left some openings to give it that natural porous look. And did some highlighting. Real easy piece. Real easy piece. And this is uh, just old cardboard there. So, uh, you put them all together and what have we got here, sir? We've got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So, that's kind of the gist. Different ways you can make mushrooms. Alright, I suppose that's about it for now. Thanks for watching Dungeons and Coffee. Until next time, keep your books off the table and keep reaching for the dice. Mm. To be sure. <laughs>